fill your thirst beside the river. Wash the journey from your hands. Feel the comfort flow inside you. Come this far, you understand. Hi. Welcome to Healing Outside the Box. I'm your host, Rosemary Lachance, a spiritual te healer, a teacher, and advisor. Hi, and I'm Carla Augustin, a spiritual teacher, and your co-host for tonight. Tonight we are continuing our Life Explained series, which will give, a, give you food for thought information about spirituality based on the teachings of Hans Wilhelm from his Life Explained series. We will play one or two different DVDs and then have dialogue about it. We encourage you to call or email us or write to NHTV with your questions and we'll answer them for you on the show or privately if you prefer. This is not a religious show and no matter what religion or belief you follow, the information we give you will only enhance your beliefs. We do not try to convince you of anything. This series is recorded and will be shown in your area on your local public service cable network. Please contact them for dates and times. If you have a group that you think would be interested in what we have to offer, we are available to come to your group and teach from this series. We will give you our contact information at the end of the show. Please visit Rosemary's or Hans's website where you will find a wealth of information about our show and this series. Our shows are now available for you to watch on YouTube for free. Just go on YouTube and type in healing outside the box to make your choices. We're constantly adding new shows, so keep checking back. We're also on Facebook under Healing Outside the Box. Please like our page for the latest information about our show. We hope you enjoy the show. All right, this is our 227th show. Wow, huh? Yeah. And the title of the show, the first DVD that we are going to play for you is called Graveyard Danger. Okay, and then we'll talk about it. So as soon as the control room gets it on the monitor, we'll play it for you. Hi, I'm Hans Willem. Again, I'm about to share something that is a bit unusual and difficult to believe, particularly if you have never heard about it before. I'm going to talk about earthbound spirits which I've already mentioned in my video on Death and Dying Part 2. Today we will look at a very special group, the one that resides on cemeteries. What most people are not aware of is that almost every graveyard is populated with earthbound souls. Those with psychic gifts can actually see these souls as they are clinging to their grave, or better, to their physical body in the grave. They never accepted the fact that life continues after death. During their earthly life, they only identified with their physical body. Now they are stuck here and many of them are an unhappy bunch of souls that frequently argue and fight with each other. In addition, there are also other souls that were indoctrinated with the religious belief of final judgment day and the resurrection of the dead in their physical body. All these souls can be stuck there for years and even centuries because of their passionate beliefs. We know from my other videos that our intense beliefs have the power to determine where our soul will be after the physical death. But none of these souls are forgotten or lost. Time and again their spiritual guides come and talk to these souls. They are often accompanied by other angelic beings from the higher spheres. Together they hope that these confused souls will follow them to the purification spheres and leave the material world behind. These angelic beings will pray with and for them, and occasionally one of these very sad souls will turn around and go with them to their appropriate spheres. So a graveyard may look peaceful and restful, but in truth, it can be a busy place with many different earthbound souls that are emotionally attached to their body or the place where their body rests. Why is it so important for us to know? 
These earthbound souls may have problems trusting and accepting their spiritual guides because they look so different to them. But they do not have such problems with human beings. When we come and visit a graveyard, these souls rush to us and try to communicate with us. But when they see that their efforts are fruitless, they can become very frustrated and even nasty because they are not heard. But there are also some souls who get great comfort when the visitors pray for somebody, especially if they pray for them. This can cause such a soul to follow these visitors and cling to them. But not every soul can actually leave the graveyard as their belief ties them to their grave. These earthbound souls that we find stuck in cemeteries are in total contrast to souls who have knowledge about the continuation of life after death. For them, their grave has as little meaning as their physical body they left behind. If you still have the need to visit graveyards, you may say a prayer for all these earthbound souls that they may open themselves up to the help offered by their guardian angel and to follow their guidance. The spiritual world tells us that every visitor should also pay great attention when he leaves the cemetery. It is suggested to give a strong command to all those unseen souls that surround him and want to attach themselves to him. We can say, remove yourself and call for your guardian spirit to help and to guide you. Follow him. God bless you all. This way, the visitor can protect himself from the dark radiation from the graveyard and avoids attachments, future complications and sufferings. Well-balanced humans usually have little to fear, but less so any emotionally unstable person. Please bear this constant danger in mind whenever you think you should take children to a graveyard. There is a better alternative to visiting a cemetery that you may want to consider. Simply light a candle at home in memory of the person you wish to remember. By adding loving thoughts and a blessing, we can help the soul of that person much more on their spiritual path than a visit to their gravesite could do. Thank you for watching. Okay. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, it yeah, was. So I know, I know. Now you're going to fire away at yes, me. Yes, I know. My first question, the earthbound spirits in the graveyards, do they know they're dead? Usually the ones in the graveyards know they're dead because they're sticking with their bodies, but they don't know what to make of it. They don't even probably don't, you know, that don't even, well, this is dead. This is not dead. I still feel alive, but I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. And this because on this planet, when they were alive, they, they had no beliefs, no uh, spiritual beliefs or even religious beliefs mm -hmm. of any kind. And they just didn't know what to do. Now they're out of their body and they're just going to hang around, you know. Right. They may venture away after. Well, that's another different group we'll talk about. But mostly they'll just stay there because that's where the body is, waiting for it, I guess, to wake up or just not knowing what to do. Okay, so different from the, the, the ghost that are earthbound yeah. spirits and they don't know they're dead, that those, they right. wander away, right? right? So that's what I, I had always heard, that they wandered away because mm -hmm. they don't think they're dead. Right. And so that's a completely different group mm -hmm. than what, what he's talking about here. Yes. They just don't know. And it's mostly because they just don't have any beliefs in afterlife. Yeah, Is that they it? don't. They just don't, so right. they don't, what an odd place to be, isn't it? Well, but there's other and, souls like them. So they're not alone. So they're not alone there. So they don't. So they feel like, okay, we're with someone now. Okay. You know, we're friends. But nobody can answer the questions because they all think the same. I don't mean to laugh because it's sad, no, really. No, I know. I but know. But they, yeah. they can't. Yeah. The ones that venture away now that you've seen, like in movies and stuff like that, they know they are and they want to be alive. So there's a, those are the ones who go visit their friends and their relatives and stay by them. That they'll stay in houses, you know, they'll, yes. whatever, anything to be close. If they're if they're nice people, but they still don't know about going 
to heaven or to any other plane or level or anything else. They'll just stick around. Mm -hmm. And then there's, of course, the ones who stick around and make mischievous. Mm -hmm. And there's the ones who cling to the people to have the vices. We talked about that, remember? Yes, yes. And they'll cling to them to try to absorb their, their bad habits, their, their smoking, energy. their drinking, their sexuality, their eating, yeah. whatever it is, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's all those kinds of different groups of souls, you know? Mm, yeah. That are around here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so he said they never accepted life after death, so they're clinging to their physical body in the grave. Um, so, I mean, follow up on that. It, they only identified with the physical body on the earth? Yeah. That, so they never thought in terms of God, spirituality, religion, like none of that. Like they, they were just, I mean, I mean, it's not just the atheist. I yes. mean, it's the atheist. atheist. That's going. You read my mind. I was going to say. Uh, oh, good okay. example of the atheist. All okay, right. I don't believe in anything, and some per people may not even think they're an atheist, but they just don't believe. Right. They don't even officially call themselves that. No, they just they, don't believe in an afterlife. Right. So where else would you go? Yeah. They just so. think, when I die, I'm dead, and that's the end of it. You know. Yeah. So, so they, they don't think, because I mean, the light must come for them, or the tunnel, well, and they, they don't probably, think to go down it. That's they don't the, know. Hmm. They don't. They don't see it. They don't pay attention to it. Nothing. Yeah. You know, they just the light won't come to them because it, uh, they don't know. They don't understand what that would be. So I don't know if they would even send even them the light. light. Yeah. yeah. And if they did, I don't know if they would see it. You're right. But okay, so I don't know if it's true of, of every being crossing over. But you know, there's it's been reported with near death experiences about the tunnel, and at the end of the tunnel is right. the light, and right. so people know to go towards that, but they don't know to go down the tunnel. Nothing, they don't no. know to... They're to just scared. scared. They really are scared, you know. Does and, it matter how they, how they died? You know, because um, it, it, does, it didn't have to be like a sudden, unexpected death. It could be no. uh, just any old way that they died. It's just because they, they don't know. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then especially if they see um, a relative come visit, They'll stay there because they don't know where to go, and and they'll be happy because the relatives are there. And then try to follow them home. Yeah, yeah. That's what we'll talk about. You have some questions on that, so yeah, we'll talk yeah, about yeah, that yeah. when yeah. that comes up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, okay. So I want to share something personal. So I know there's exceptions, but you know my dad didn't believe in afterlife. No. Okay. No, he didn't. But he, I know he crossed over because um, I definitely have gotten messages. So it got me thinking, right? I'm sure there's always exceptions, but do you think in my dad's case, something actually did transpire right before he died? Do you know, and so in other words, he didn't believe, but I, I do know he did cross. So maybe he said he didn't believe and he had his doubts and he was open to it or, do you think angels could have come to him, bef you know, when he was in his last hours and just sort of whispered to him then, and then he followed them? Do you know what I mean? Well, how long like, after he passed did you know he, he crossed over? Um, I knew for sure. I mean, I knew right away because I smelled a scent. But it doesn't but mean it, he crossed over. But it doesn't mean it he means crossed around over. You, around okay, you. all right. So then, but then um, I did get a message about. I'm going to say six weeks later. Okay. All right. So maybe in that period of time, they were able to convince the him. angels. You know, he he had a little bit of belief. Now he was questioning where he was, and he was asking for help, and the angels came. Uh, if you see that movie Astral City, it t explains exactly what happens. Okay. And the angels came and t and took him away and took him up there because he okay. was willing and ready to go, and he wanted to go, and it happened to him pretty quickly. Right. You know? So yeah. So that's what it got me thinking. Like, is he? Was he just opened at one point in his life, but then not at the end of his life? And then, and then when the opportunity came, he did cross. Yeah, it could, it could be any of those things. And it could be just that when he saw them, he went, oh, there is an afterlife. There is one. And when they asked him if he wanted to go, and he said, yeah, yes, then I do. Go. Yeah. yeah. We can only speculate. Right. But something like that had to happen for yeah. him, you know, to, to do that. To go. Yeah. Okay. When you smell the scents, that, that means doesn't they're mean near that, you. No, they, it that, doesn't mean that they're that earthbound mean. or stuck here. Sometimes they'll come and let you know that they're around by doing that, you know. Sometimes it'll be a loud 
so, you know, it, it, depending on how much they've progressed, you know, <clears throat> sometimes they've been hanging around for a long time and they just want to get you to notice. So whatever perfume a woman had or tobacco that a father's had or right. you know, smelled, smoked, um, excuse me, right. smoked or something like that to let you know, you know. That, you but know. you're saying that that could, because we, we talk about that, you know, I teach that after death communication class. And so a scent is one way for them to communicate when they've definitely crossed over. But you were saying that you could still smell a scent even if they don't cross over. Is that what you were saying before? Did I misunderstand um, that? You know, if they don't cross over, it means they don't know about life after. So I don't think they would know to to, to let have a scent, scent okay. to give you. I would okay. I would think that. They wouldn't know how to do that. Okay. Once you're crossed over, the angels can tell them, you know. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they can't just, if they hang around, it's not good. They need to go on and learn and grow. Right. But once in a while, if you need a little cheering or you're particularly thinking about them and, and they feel it and they say, can, can I just go and, you know, and then, then they, they'll, yeah, they'll then help they're you. Allowed, they're allowed to go, but that's they'll why They'll go I, with you and help you, yeah, help That's them. why I thought that he crossed over right away because I did smell a scent right away. Mm -hmm. It didn't convince me right away right. that that was him, but I did smell a scent right away. So that's why I was okay, just yeah, wondering about that. Okay, yeah, that you wonder if he did it right away. So I'm wondering it if he did it right away. Yeah, it might have been pretty quick. Yeah. You know, if he, yeah. what kind of person was he? Was he open minded at all? Or? He was great. Yeah, he was. He was very, very educated and um, he was open, but he wasn't open to this stuff. Uh, yeah, he yeah. wasn't open to this, and he really didn't understand why I was getting into it. It was around the time that I was really, really delving into all of this. Was he thinking, when you're gone, you're gone, that's it? So, yeah, when his... you're gone, you're gone. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he was thinking that. Okay, boy, was uh, he surprised. Was he surprised. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a lot of people are going to go, uh-huh, uh -huh. okay, this is all what right. they were talking this about. This is what they meant. Yeah. yeah. You're cool. Okay. It's funny. All right, so... I would love to hear that conversation between the angels trying to convince these earthbound souls to cross over. What it is? What do you think they are saying to them? Well, I think that their presence is enough to make them see, and they're they're, they're very light, beautiful beings. Mm. You know, they're light filled and everything, and their presence must be a little bit awestruck. Awestru make them awestruck, yes. you know? And they may say to them, you can come with us if you like, yeah. and we'll bring you to this beautiful place, or you can stay here. The choice is really it your decision. It's always yours, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, always. Like in, the, in that movie, he was, he didn't know where he was. He was like in a purgatory kind of place. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to, he, he was watching everything and he was suffering. And he was seeing all the people that were there like him and they were a bit, uh, icky crowd. And um, they didn't even want him there. They were picking on him and everything else. And then he heard, all of a sudden he saw this, these two people talking. I think they were a couple, husband and wife. And all of a sudden, they just realized that what they, what they had done, they realized how they had treated each other. And one of them said, I'm so sorry I treated you that way. I didn't mean it. He goes, I'm sorry I treated you that way. And they kept going and apologized. And the minute that happened, the angels came for them. Yeah. And he saw that, and he went, oh, my God, you know. And then he's laying there, and all of a sudden he started to pray. Uh, help me. Please help me. I'm so sorry. I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I'm suffering. I don't know. And one minute he asked for help, they were there. The help. Just like on this planet. When we really ask for help, we will get the we help. We will get the help. Yeah, we will. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing there, you know. Mm -hmm. But they won't do it there as well as they don't do it here. If we don't ask, they will not interfere. They don't make it happen. No. You have to go. Yeah. yeah. I took a um, couple of shamanism classes, and, and one of the things that shamans do or help people, animals, you know, souls cross over. So we had to do this exercise where I, we, we go somewhere, you know, we, 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 we go into upper world and um, to help somebody cross over. And they told us to tell them, um, if they don't want to, like, say, leave their family, if they're like, no, i got to be with my children, mm. something like that, to say, you can help your children more if you come with me. There you go. You know, and we didn't take them there. But as soon as they say yes, boom, the angels just grab them and take them and bring them over. Yeah. Yeah, so trying to convince them. I was wondering, that. I mean, that's what we were told in the class, but I was wondering what you thought the angels would do. But it makes sense. It has to be their free will. Yeah, it has to be. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, they, well, they, they want it naturally. That's our first instinct is to want to stay among the people we love. Well, yes. Worrying that they won't be able to survive without us or who's going to take care of them now if it's a case of parents or something. Right. Or a child that, you know, doesn't want to leave his parents, you know, things mm-hmm. like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Every, every, it's hard to say what they would tell them. But what the shaman said was a good that was a good thought. That yeah. was kind of a good yeah, thought. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. And I, I had read somewhere, and I don't know where, but whatever you think it's going to be, it will be. So mm-hmm. if you think it's a big nothing, then that's probably what you're going to see. But if you imagine choirs of angels singing, then that's probably what you see. If you imagine a beautiful land like Earth, then that's probably what you yeah, see. That's right. If you imagine. Being, you know, so whatever you're kind of thinking, because the point of it was, is that everybody to some degree needs to be kind of convinced to take that big step back, you know, because you're so alone doing mm-hmm. it, and and um, so they make it very familiar for you in the afterlife to whatever it is that makes you comfortable. Yeah, and if you think it's bad, and you think it's bad over there or evil over there, then that's that's what you're going to find too. That's what you're going to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so have good thoughts, everybody. Yeah, that's, what I mean. that's why we're here. When, yeah, that's why really we're on Earth. Thoughts. And what we're Think trying positive. to teach you people is that we're mm. trying to tell you, learn here so that when you pass, it's going to be easy for you. A lot you. easier. Yeah. All right. Um, do, you, do you ever feel earthbound souls at a graveyard? You know, if you ever go to a funeral service or anything, do you feel them? I was trying to think back after I watched this. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think so. I mean, I've gone... I don't, you know, to visit my mothers or my aunts and my uncles. They're all around the same place. And, um, no, I, I never really yeah. felt that they were hanging around there. Hanging no. around no. or anything like that. No, I don't. Or even any other spirits or anything like that. Because I feel like, I was trying to think about it, and I'm like, you know, I think I, think I feel grief, but I think it's just the energy from anybody visiting mm-hmm. a, a graveyard. So I feel There's like a lot I of energy feel an energy, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I definitely feel energy, but I never feel like anybody, uh, uh, there's an earthbound spirit, you know, or yeah. I've never ha- thought of one clinging to me or, or you know, anything no. like that. Um, no. But, you know, no, I, I, I haven't, I, I haven't I, had the Actually, I, f- I find it very peaceful. In a way, You know, in yeah. the cemetery, I find it peaceful. Uh, yeah. Well, at least where mine are in Beaverdale. It's just, uh, it's nice there. And I always felt a, a peace there for some mm-hmm. reason. Mm-hmm. I never felt a fear or I never felt anyone around me or anything mm-hmm. like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And I would talk to them just in case, but I, I knew, I didn't think they were there. I think they're all someplace in another plane having a good old time. Yeah. <laughs> or what they're doing, you know. Yeah, right. So, I mean, right. you don't necessarily wake up and like, oh, well, now I've got to get back to heaven. You may stay in certain planes for certain amounts of time until you wake up and say, you know, this is not enough either. You want to go higher and higher, and that's how you, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you think they can hear you, though? I mean, okay. you know, when you're speaking to them or praying or whatever. When you're praying for them or speaking to them and you want them to hear you, you have to talk out loud. Okay. They can't read your thoughts. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Only angels can read your thoughts. Okay. And, of course, God and Christ and all. Right. But only the angels can read what you're thinking. They know what you're thinking, but not our relatives or friends who passed over. Okay. They can only hear. So if you're going to pray for them, pray out loud pray so out they'll loud. know that you're praying for them. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. That's interesting. Okay. Um, all right. So he's talking about how they f- f- somehow feel comfort from us, right? And they can follow us home. And they'll get frustrated if we're not responding to them. And he said they could get nasty. So what do they do when they get frustrated and agitated? I mean, create negative energy? Or, you know, I was thinking, what? Follow us home and wreak havoc? Or... I don't think, I don't know. I don't think for the most part they follow us home. They may, and, and they, if they're just our relatives or our friends that we knew, they wouldn't want to hurt us or bo- you know, bother right. us. So they may just follow and hang around and things like that. You know, uh, if, they, if they got nasty, it would be somebody who was nasty on this planet. Anyways, yeah. Yeah, so don't go visit nasty people. <laughs> <laughs> Good because, tip for tonight. Yeah, don't, don't visit, visit nasty don't people. Just in the pray for them from afar. <laughs> yeah. 
pray for them. Because they might, you know, they might, oh, she's alive, you know, I'm going to follow her home more. Mm. Or the, and if the ones that are love you, if they cling to you, they're just going to cling to you. They're just going to be okay. around. Yeah, they're not going to try to hurt you or anything like that, you know. Right, right. And it depends on how well adjusted you are, too, which we'll talk about after. Well, they would get fr frustrated. W wouldn't they be more fr frustrated because they don't know they're dead? Or, or no, the ones in the cemetery know they're dead. They know they are dead. Okay. All right. All right. The ones that don't know that, that leave their body right away. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Um, so I do like his suggestions where he says, to say prayers to the earthbound souls, to listen to the angels and go to the afterlife. Seem like a good thing to do if you feel like you really do want to go to a funeral service at a graveside. And, you know, just ahead of time, you know, just to ask, you know, to protect yourself, you know, to ask the angels, if you see any earthbound souls when I'm at the grave, graveyard, you know, can you help them or something like that? Yeah, just you don't have to say before you get there, because it's not like you're going to walk in, they're going to all jump on you. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't say it when the service is going on, because people look at you like you're yeah, nuts. Yeah. But if you go there by yourself, you could say it out loud. Yeah. Maybe you're visiting someone and there's some mm -hmm. other... Uh, people buried near them, mm -hmm. and you could just say, um, "Okay, everyone, listen to me mm -hmm. now. Don't don't hang around here anymore. This is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. You know how much what's waiting for you out there. You know, if you next time your angels come by, go with them and learn. You know, things like that. Yeah. Talk to them just like you, we talk to each other. Right. You know, that's all you have to do. Right. So, right. That's it. And then the second recommendation he makes is to command them not to cling to you. Which is the other thing. I don't think we have realized we do have that much power to say, don't cling to me. Well, or to remove themselves from you, he said. I don't know. How would you know that they were clinging to you? I mean, unless you felt I it. I guess don't take any chances. If you go to a graveyard, you know, don't take chances. I've never done that. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know that I agree about that. Mm -hmm. You know, unless you're a very, very sensitive person, you could feel them around you. Then I would say, you know, go to the light. Don't stay here. Just go to the light. Just go to the and light. And there are people who could feel and sense that, you know. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I just go love and peace in my heart. And, and you know, what you, what you have in you, you don't attract opposite. You know what I'm saying? Right. That right, kind of thing, right, you know. Right, right, all right. So I, I would just, if you have a good mind and you ha you're you of a good mind and a peaceful mind and a loving mind, those things probably won't occur to you. And uh, they'll stand around maybe, but they won't be able to get near you. And if they follow you, they'll have to come back because, oh, I don't want to leave my body, right. you know, that kind of thing, depending on who they are. Mm. If they're all meanies, so that's a different story. Right. But I think a meanie would, well, you never know. They could either go and have this good time or they could stick around there. And you don't know. I can't answer that positively. You know? Yeah. I, I think, but I, I also think as I was listening to it, you know, this earthbound spirits, the whole idea of it, I mean, that can happen anywhere. You know, yeah. they always say where there's low vibrations. So right. unfortunately, bars, restaurants, movie theaters, secondhand shops, you know, I mean, that these earthbound spirits can be. So, we really, we, you could say it about almost everywhere, you know, that you kind of... Well, in the bars, it's, it's, it's the ones who were alcoholics before they pass, and they pass that way. Mm -hmm. And they're going to hang around there and absorb the vibration from you or whoever is there that right. is an alcoholic. Right. If it's a, uh, one of those, um, what, sex stores, mm -hmm. you know, or mm -hmm. nightclubs that are like that, they're going to be there trying to do the same thing. If it's... If it's restaurant and this man is very gluttonous with all this food they're going to hang cling on to him even though they don't know him yeah they're going to try to get from the earth what they got when they were here all the energy yeah because yeah. they don't know anything mm. they don't think about anything else mm -hmm. i just want to get back and if i can't get back i'm going to grab the energy from you that's mm -hmm. when they steal our energy mm -hmm. and those people it's not going to be pleasant because they're going to egg mm. him on to eat more eat or more. drink more yeah. or have more sex or whatever the See, case may be yeah. mm -hmm. they're going to do that they're mm -hmm. gonna, you know, you, they're gonna influence you, you know, because mm -hmm. they want more. Mm -hmm. um, so don't have those bad habits. <laughs> all right. So he says, well-balanced humans have little to fear. So right. let's talk about that. So yeah, it's that's a little bit what you're alluding what I'm, to now. What I'm yeah. saying, yeah, people who yeah. are not excessive, excessive in anything, people who don't really fear death. 
you're not interesting to the earth, the no. earth brown souls because you yeah. you're not excessive in anything. No. You have, you don't have negativity around you. You don't have yeah, yeah, so you you be well balanced, and and if you're a loving, kind person and things like that, you know, mm -hmm. you won't you can't attract that because their vibration is such that you only attract the you know the, the good souls, and they won't be here anyway. Yeah, <laughs> they'll be up there. So yeah, that's interesting. You know, people who um, if you saw uh, what dreams may come with mm -hmm. Robin Williams, yeah, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, remember remember the sea of faces. Mm -hmm. Those are people who committed suicide, mm -hmm. and they thought that they deserved nothing more than what they had there. That's what they thought. You know, mm -hmm. they, they believed it. Whatever you believe is what will happen when you go over there. Yeah. You know, I mean, they can say, "Oh, well, I'm going to believe I'm going to have this and this." And this. No, I don't mean that kind of thing. I mean, self punishment or feeling you deserve to be punished or feeling like this is all there is or things like that. And that's what you'll find, what you think that's all there is. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you feel, you'll find is what you'll find. And it'll be mostly your imagination, okay? And people, or, or to a place where people think like that and conjure up those kinds of thoughts and places. And because there's different levels over there and some of them are not too much higher than this one, you know, and depending mm -hmm. on your growth, where you go until you mm. learn and wake up and as you do that you go higher and higher and higher yeah. until you get back. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he cautions taking kids to graveyards and um, you know, again, I mean that could happen anywhere with kids, you know what I mean? You're bringing kids to restaurants, you're bringing, I mean they're, kids are so pure. Yes. Right? So what, what's to grab onto a kid, you know? I know. It's a tough one. I know. One. I can't. Yeah, you know, I can't agree I with everything all the way on this one. You yeah, know? I had a hard time with so that. You have a good like mind. That, you if, know, if the. But there are some. There are some people who are very, very psychic and very open to that kind of thing. If you saw that movie, The Exorcist. Mm. Okay, I use these movies because they give people an examples. She was very, very psychic, very uh, open. She clairvoyance, clear senses. She had all that, and her mother taught her nothing about God. Or Christ, or anything, anything at all religious. Nothing. She had no background in that at all. So when this this dark entity came to her through the Ouija board, she didn't know what it was. She just thought it was somebody. She thought it was fun because yeah. he moved the board and stuff. And so he started taking over more and more and more. Right. So that can happen to someone like that, you know. Yeah. But. That's a pretty uh, extreme case, right? You know, right, right, right. But I would encourage the kids not to to play with Ouija boards. No, no, no. Not no. to try to summon up people who are passed no, over. No, 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 no. Not to do seances. any of this kind of thing. No, don't do any right. of that. Yeah, but don't. if they're that kind of person who do that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but a, but a kid, a little kid wouldn't even I have the power to no. do it. Really, no. A teenagers maybe, but not. Maybe teenagers, yeah. but yeah, not. So no. I don't know. I can't see spirits jumping onto little kids or following little kids. No. So. I don't think no. you have to fear that. Just keep your mind. Don't don't be fearful because what you fear will get you. Right. Just right. go with an open be heart. Aware. Yeah, be aware. That's what this is. Be aware. Is. Go, be aware. Yeah. go with an open heart. Pray for those that are there. Yeah. You know, be loving. You only like mm -hmm. attracts like. Mm -hmm. You know. I do. I'll end with this. I do like how he says, "Light a candle to remember someone," and you know it helps them on their spiritual path. Yeah. And um, you know, in after death communication, when I teach that class, when deceased loved ones are asked, you know, "What can I do for you?" Um, they always say, "Just pray for me," because it really does help them on their spiritual path because they continue it on the other side, as we've right. talked about. And it helps them along. So Encourage I find them, it, yeah. Find, I find it fascinating, right? We, you know, the old, I don't know, the thinking is you cross over like you know all the answers and you've got it all together. And, and it's like, no, it's still a journey. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's still a journey. There's still a mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. A lot to learn, a lot to know and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you have an open heart uh, and, and, you know, you have this great sense of right and wrong, mm -hmm. danger and not danger, all that. You're going to do just fine, mm -hmm. you know, because there's 49 levels to get to before we get to heaven. Mm. And not everyone has to go to all 49. <laughs> mm. You can skip some, if, depending right. on how do, good you do. Now, lighting the candle, the candle's always, it's like a light in the darkness. There's something about a candle. Symbolic. Yeah, that's what sure. it is. Yeah. That's why they have them in churches. People go light candles for the mm -hmm. people. 
it's like symbolic of lighting a light for them, light their way, you know? Mm. And you could just say them when you're lighting the candle, this is for you, Joe. Mm. You know, this candle is going to light your way back home. Mm -hmm. Listen to your angels, listen to your guys, and the, the light will attract them. And it does attract, doesn't yeah, it? Something yeah. about a, a light, the a, candle, flickering a flame, candle. It, it attracts spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why it does. It pray, light the candle, and pray for them, mm -hmm. and always just have a, a selfless, um, loving, giving spirit towards them, mm -hmm. and it will help them tremendously. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even if if someone's around, as a spirit bothering you that you don't really want to, just do the same thing to them. Mm -hmm. Go home. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be here. You're not welcome here. Go on your journey yourself. Say mm -hmm. with a loving heart. Right, go. go. You won't get anything from me. Go. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't happen very often. Right. So. Right. Only those people who fool around with the darkness, you know. Yeah, get into real trouble with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So I guess yeah. we'll show the second one, which is called Why We Don't Remember Past Lives. Hi, I'm Hans Willen. Many people are wondering why we do not remember our past lives. They think if we would only know what we did wrong in the past, we could now do better in this lifetime. Now, this sounds logical, but would it really be the optimal way for us to grow? Let me share with you the reasons why we do not remember our past lives every time we incarnate into a human body. Firstly, we have to remember that as human beings, our understanding is shaped by the three-dimensional world that we live in. So to fully grasp the seven-dimensionality of our spiritual existence is virtually impossible from our present limited perspective, although everything that ever happened is stored in our soul. Another reason is divine mercy. Chances are that we have lived many, many lives before. And we can assume that in some of these lives we might have done some horrific things to others or even to ourselves. After all, life in the past centuries was far more violent than today. Remembering these cruel acts could create major guilt and even depressions and hopelessness in us. Therefore, at birth or shortly thereafter, Divine Mercy lovingly shields these memories from us with what is called the veil of forgetfulness, so that we can live without any distracting memories from past lifetimes. A further reason is our conscience, also called the little voice within. In my video about the conscience, I have explained that after our physical death, each soul is going through a life review where we experience how all our thoughts, words and actions have impacted others and ourselves. The pain of these self-reflections remains in our soul and will be part of our inner voice that guides us not to repeat the same mistakes again in our present lifetime. So we don't need the actual detailed memories of our past lives because we have the emotional reactions to our past life choices as our conscience within us. And our conscience is based on love because it knows we have most likely been both victim as well as perpetrator. But I believe that the most important reason why we don't remember our past lives is to make our today's choices from love and not just from our intellect. Let us look at a typical example. Imagine I hate my brother in this lifetime. If I had a total memory recall of my past life, I might see the actual cause of this hatred. Something happened between the two of us that created this animosity. With this sudden understanding, I could now decide to have a better relationship with my brother. Now this might sound like a step into the right direction, but it was an intellectual decision based on memory. It came totally from my head and not from my heart. It didn't come from unconditional, unlimited and all-inclusive love, but from intellectually rationalizing a situation. Our spiritual growth is based on love and actualization of that love, but not on our intellect. 
And finally, everything that we ever need to solve and undo from our past mistakes comes automatically to us as the daily building blocks. I've explained that in greater detail in my video about the amazing Earth School. Our karma is stored in the huge causal computer of the stars and planets that make up the material and fine material cosmoses. These repository stars and planets are in constant movement and when they reach a certain position, they download portions of our karma back to us on Earth. These portions are carefully attuned to the strength of our soul. These downloads are the building blocks that make up a good chunk of our days from moment to moment. It is like a mighty current of energy which brings to each one of us what is relevant for us today to recognize and clear up. Every moment, every second, every minute and every hour of our day is carefully orchestrated for us. Or strictly speaking, by us. Because we created that karma in the first place. Therefore, there is absolutely no need to know and remember all the gruesome details of any old negative karma. Can we now see that it is a blessing and not a mistake why we do not remember our past lives? It is all part of this magnificent, wonderful, divine plan to bring us home. Back to God, back to unconditional, unlimited and all-inclusive love. And it's not complicated to do. We all know the golden rule. Do unto others as you want them to unto you. Or the other way around, don't do to others what you don't want them to do to you. In this simple rule lies the secret of an ethical lifestyle that balances out negative karma and makes each day an interesting experience in the school of life. It is as simple as that. Okay. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, was it? It was, yeah. A lot of people would I say mean, that. I've heard that. Well, if there are past lives, why don't, how come I don't remember? Right. And it's a good thing that. that we don't. I like how he said divine mercy. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we all have probably done some not so nice things, to put it mildly, you know, to, up to horrific things for all Some that we know. Us, yeah, we might. And if we knew that, living this life, it'd be so hard. It would be hard. We couldn't live this life, really. It would be hard to be, you know, we, bad enough we have enough guilt from yes. this life. <laughs> I know. <that's> right? <laughs> We Imagine. don't need to add on no. the last 25. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, going way back. Yeah, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. How can need... I ever exist? Why did God create me? You know, oh, ooh, yeah, yeah, it would be really hard yeah. to, to, to do that. Way back when, people did some horrendous things to each other. Mm. Because that's the way it was that's in those days. That's the way things. it was. That's what everybody was doing. Some, a lot of people were acting like that. Yeah. Some were victims and some were perpetrators, mm. you know, so. Right. You right. know, depending on what you were, even if you're a victim, you still would be angry. And mm -hmm. you probably might want to get, I got even with them in another life. Right. You know, you don't know. Right. So. Right. Yeah, no. And I, I, I love the one, too, where he talks about the importance that we make our choice from love, not intellect. You know, that, that show, that's yeah. why we, and he mentions it here, too. Yeah. But yeah, and he talked about it on that show. But. I mean, that was really reached me because it's like, oh, yeah, if we knew, if I knew in a past life I wasn't nice to you, I'd be like, oh, well, that's simple. I'll just be nice to her in this life. And yeah, it, I've, I've made up for my karma and I'm done. Right. And right. it's like, well, no, that's not the, that's no, not the way it works. Because it wasn't from your heart. <laughs> yeah, it's right. It yeah. has to be truly from. That's what people think they can cheat. Yeah, you you're not cheating. Cheat. Yeah. You know, you feel that way. You don't feel that way. You can't right. fake it. Yeah. You know? Right. It's like people who fake it with people who they praise and everything else to win them over, to get a job or whatever, mm. you know, get a raise, get a promotion, mm -hmm. whatever. It's not real. If right. they're not real, they can't keep it up. Right. Sooner or later, you're going to say, I'm sick and tired of trying to please you, you know, because well, you should have been trying to please me in the first place. Anyways, yeah. You know? Right. That's what right. happens with relationships between men and women. Yes. I'll be whatever you want me to be. Right. Oh, God help me. Mm. You can't do that. You got to be who you are. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. they love you, fine. If they don't, fine. It's the on. way it is. Right. Yeah. Move on. So it's the same way in all of this, in all kinds of situations with us in life. Mm -hmm. You know. 
Yeah, and I and I love to um, him mentioning the golden rule. I mean, it's just it's it's such an easy rule, but it's not an easy rule for us to live. No, we've been doing to this, others. Yeah, Christ told us when He walked on Earth two thousand years ago, and we're mm. still not behaving that way. Right. We are not behaving that way. No. No. And that's that's the simple truth of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, learning to do that. Can you imagine what a loving world it would be? Oh, what a loving world! Yeah. <laughs> Be just amazing. those, yeah. those that Sermon on the Mount. Just give people and, the respect yeah. and that you want. Right. Listen to people like you want to be listened to. Treat them. Be kind to people like yeah. you want people to be kind to you. Exactly. Yeah, just and mean a, it from your heart and soul. Mm, not because you want them to, but because right. you do. Right, right. And it feels right. feels right, you know? Genuine. Yeah. You know, and if genuine. there are and there are people out there that are very annoying. I know. It's very mm -hmm. difficult. And there's some people you have to walk away from if they're saying, Well, I can't be that way with everyone. I know that. Mm. I know annoying people myself. Right. And you just have to hello, how are you? And just that's it. No right. relationship with them because it doesn't work. Yeah. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So yeah. just leave them to God. Not mm -hmm. about your life. That's all. Mm -hmm. You can't be friendly with them because it doesn't work. Mm. You know, but you don't have to hate them or anything else or wish them ill will or anything right. like that. Mm -hmm. Just. And I think, too, um, the viewers should realize even if they if they say they don't believe in past life, that's fine because um, you don't need to believe in past no. life to live a good life here. Right. So you don't have to. That's not a requirement no. to get into heaven or anything. No. It's just it's just for people that do, it's just they, they have these questions like yeah. how come I don't know and all this kind of stuff. But you don't have to believe no, you if you're watching this and you don't believe that's that's okay. That's all right. Uh, you yeah. know, you still want to follow the golden rule. Right, right. right? It has nothing to do with it. Yeah, it has People, nothing to do with it. A lot of times they want to know about past lives because they're curious. Mm. And they all think they were somebody famous in a past life. Everybody yeah, wants to be famous. Everybody wants to be famous. Oh, I was Elizabeth life. Taylor, or I was yeah. the Queen of Sheba, or I was Delilah, yeah. or yeah. somebody famous, you know? And other times, though, uh, there's been uh, past life regressionists who have helped people. Uh, because psychologists who've had knowledge of this will tell them maybe you need a regression to find out why this keeps happening over and over and over again. Maybe a serious problem, mm -hmm. and maybe that will help. And when you find out what it is, like somebody drowned in a past life, right? They're petrified of water, petrified. Yes, it, it, it just it, unbelievably. Mm -hmm. And they had a regression. They found out that they had drowned. They had drowned. Yeah. Yeah, it can really help with phobias. Yeah. And other people you who know? have drowned don't have that. Phobia, they're okay with it. You know, they right. they dealt it with it at the time, it, right. right? It doesn't mean it. And sometimes, if you yeah. incarnate too quickly, you'll still carry that with you inside. That's the problem too. Is that why it happens? A lot of that times, it, lots of times, because you, yeah. you came in too quick. Yeah, you didn't listen to your angels because they mm -hmm. they would have told you, no, this you're is not, not a good ready. time to right. You're not ready, but you mm -hmm. don't want to listen. You want to get back. Mm -hmm. So you bring all those neuroses from everything, all these lives back with you all the time. Oh. You know. Yeah. A lot of people that are in um, uh, psychiatric hospitals either have that kind of problem or are possessed by spirits or things like that. Not all just going out of their mind. Mm. So there's a lot of reasons for it. It has to do with a spirituality mm -hmm. of some kind, whether mm -hmm. it's the, the regression, that you, what you did in past lives, mm -hmm. or um, <clears throat> what I said before, oh, be, uh, being uh, possessed. Yeah. Um, you know, I've taken a couple of uh, classes, right, uh -huh. in past life regression, and the interesting thing is, they'll even say in class, you don't have to believe it's true. Like when you go through the exercise and you go back in time and then you imagine, you know, you're not imagining, but you, you see this life and they walk you through it. It's like a meditation and you get walked th through it. And they said it, it doesn't even matter if it is true. It's they. It's just they find it so healing for yeah. people That's true. because for some reason it offers an explanation um, when yeah. they have past life regression to think, oh, is you know that why I walk with a limp? Is that why I have a fear of this? Is that why yeah. I you know yeah. all these different things? It can help so it can, you. Yeah. It can help you. Yeah. And you can get over it. And you can get yeah. over yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had had a past life regression, Ted? Only uh, doing classes where you know you work on each other. Uh huh. It's fascinating. What I did mean, they, it's, can you it's, want to tell something that they came up with for you? Did you find out? You know, um, you, you know, I went to a woman who, um, she 
she did all kinds of things, right? She was this very old woman, she was a healer. And um, I had always thought since I was a little kid that I was around like in the early settler days. Like I just loved those westerns. I loved everything about the pilgrims. Loved it. I just always loved it. That's another thing. It doesn't have to be a phobia. It could be this love unexplained love, love yeah. of something, something you wish you could go back to. And I just always thought it would be such a great to live in those times. Anyways, I get out of the car. This woman knows nothing about me. We've never met. I didn't tell her anything on the phone. I get out of the car, and um, she did readings about past lives. You weren't in a regression. And she goes, Oh my goodness, you look so cute. You have a little pilgrim hat on. <laughs> I was just like, all right, I know you're the real deal because <laughs> yeah. you are definitely the real deal because I have thought this. It was so validating. I have thought this for so long. And she just starts talking about all these different uh, past lives. And, and another one she came up with was, um, she says, um, does your husband travel a great deal with his work? And I said, he, he, you know, he used to. I said, yes, he, he does. And um, she said, you were the wife of a sea captain. She goes, now it makes sense. And you were really okay with it because he used to go for a year at a time and stuff like that. So that's why you're so comfortable in this life that you have a husband that <sighs> travels for work. So you wonder almost if yeah. they with your lives, if you get arranged with different families and different relationships because exactly. you can handle something, because you had something in a past life. So I, I find it also fascinating. You know, I'm on the other opposite end of the spectrum. In what way? I um, hate Western movies. Oh, don't like so we them. didn't meet there. Cowboys, Indians, <laughs> no, I don't like them. And I, I got regressed. And uh, I lived out. I had a husband and two children. And I lived out in the uh, wilderness. Prairie. Wilderness, yeah, yeah, the prairie there. You know, washing, cooking. You know, pumping the water. And I found it very boring. And I ran away from them. Oh. I left my family. And I went to town. <laughs> I got work at in working in a saloon. And I wasn't a you know, a prostitute, but I was, I used to be bartending and I used to smoke cigars <laughs> <laughs> and I bartended, you know, and cleaned up after all the women and everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So then yeah. I said, oh my God, that's how I was. But I love Native Americans. I feel very close to Native Americans. Interesting. In another regression, I was a Native American woman and my father was a chief of the tribe. Mm. And I oh, was so happy. See, I love the land and living on the land yeah. and things like that, you know. Yeah. And he, he was, the, you know, the chief, and I loved him so much and all the people. We were a peaceful tribe, you know, mm. and I was getting married. I married this this man, and I followed him, you know, and blah, blah, blah. Not to go into detail, but that yeah. explains that, too, you know. Yeah. So that was just two of them. I've had a few more, but those two. Well, yeah. I, yeah um, you have something else? It, it, well, yeah. I mean, it's kind of funny because I feel like with the explanation of past life, um, we've all been something. We've all been everything. So we've we've been rich. We've been poor. We've yeah. been, you know, um, you know, just uh, um, been good, royalty. We've, been, bad. we've yeah. been peasants. We've yeah. been good. We've been bad. We've been you know, we've been brilliant, we've been not so brilliant, we've been, we've been everything that we need to, need to be. Needed to learn, yeah, yeah. needed to, to, to learn. learn what we yeah. had, yeah. Right, right, You're right. right. And, um. That's why reincarnation is so important. I think so, and I think, I think the idea of reincarnation is helpful in, in that if you really do accept that you're here because you are meant to experience what your life is right now, everything that's been given to you. And you have enough inside you. You have enough intelligence. You have enough resources. You have, you have enough around you 
to solve whatever you need to solve or to advance yourself in whatever you need you want to or to improve yourself in whatever way. Like you have it. You're smart enough to do what you need to do. That's right. Um, you, you, know, you, ha you do have people in your life to do what you need to do. So not to spend any time wasted thinking, gee, I wish I were smarter, I wish I were prettier, I wish I were yeah. this -er or that or -er. It's a like waste, it's isn't it? such a waste. Yeah. It's such a waste. Like I know I was, a, I know I was, I know I was a surgeon in a past life. I just crave that life. I just, oh. I really crave that life. And um, well, I was definitely not given the IQ chops to be a surgeon in this life. But I understand why, because I wasn't meant to be a surgeon in this life, right? You have to be ultra brilliant to what, be a surgeon. Well, Let's it has face to, it. You come in to make up for or learn what, about something. Something your, else. Yeah. So it's like, okay, it's, it's so many people. I mean, you could really basically say, oh, been there, been, been there, done that, you know, yeah. in terms of, you know, you're just, you know, there's no sense saying, I wish I could sing so I could be a singer. It's just, no. you're not meant to be a singer. You know, you may be pining for a life when you were a singer, but you're not meant to sing in this life. You're meant to do something else. You're right. So I think it's helpful to let things go in a way, you know, and know. just stay on your path and do what you want. See, yeah, if, if, you, to do. if you have enough awareness and you search out these things to find out answers for yourself, you'll realize every life was meant to be. Every life, if you listen to your angels, you picked it so you could learn what you needed to learn. Yes. And every time you have a life, you get closer and closer to getting home. Mm. And sometimes you can live that life on other planes and other levels and you can, you know, have a different life there until you get home. If you just realize that that's what it's all about, going home. Yes. Going home. Right. Stop right. gathering right. treasures on this planet because you don't take them with you. Right. There's nothing to gain from them except comfort while you're here and then it's going to be over. Mm. It's going to be over. Mm -hmm. And what's next? Mm -hmm. Well. Those right. are the people back to the graveyard. Yeah, <laughs> I don't believe yeah, anything, yeah. so I'm going to hang around here for a long time, you know. Right. And you won't incarnate. It'll be, no. be oh, so long. No, you know? I know. So I know. you're right. People should just be aware. Listen, look at all the options that are open to us to find things out, to learn things. Mm -hmm. Let's just, just not rush through life gathering, 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 and playing and playing and playing. Let's, yeah. let's or get wishing. to the meeting. Yeah, wishing. You know, wishing. I wish I had her life. I wish I, you know, had that available to me. I wish I had those parents. I wish I had, you know, it's just like, don't. You know, you, you, you know you've experienced so many oh. things, bless you, and you may continue in future lives, experience different things. Yeah. Just believe you're here and you've been given everything that you need to to live this life. You have the ability. Your essence knows what to do yeah. and can do it for you. Right. Yeah. Be grateful for every life because every right. life you have was given to you by God mm -hmm. as a chance to learn and grow, grow and make grow. up for, mm -hmm. and get that much closer to home. Mm -hmm. Because once we get there, everything is perfect. Mm. It's what we were meant to be. It's who what we were created as. It, it's... You'll see when you get there. <laughs> what can I say? You know, how do I know? Because I believe it in my heart and soul. Mm -hmm. I believe it with every bit of my being. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that's what I right. wait for. Right. And yeah. I'm grateful to what I learned, and I this has been a tough one. I've learned mm -hmm. a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You never know what a stranger could come up to you and say in the street that'll make you realize something. It happened to me the other day, really? and I went, "Aha! Mm -hmm. Aha! She saw that. She didn't even know me. She said something out to me, and I." Aha, uh -huh, so it's showing. Things like that, you know? Oh, okay. And uh, it's all a right. learning situation. Right. Well, sweetheart, are we, at the end? we are done for this night. Okay. Until next time. All right. So we'll give our contact information. For me, it's Rosemary Lachance. Phone is 203-627-7966. My email is whitebuffalo8 at comcast.net. And my website is www.rosemarylachance.com. And the most important website for you to go on to learn all about these different things you're searching for is www.gabrielle-publishing-house.com. It's a world of wealth and a world of information for you waiting. And I'm Carla Augustine. You can visit my website at carlaaugustine.com. And also, please watch my show on YouTube. It's called Spiritual Invitation. And when you go on YouTube, you just type in my name in the search and all the shows will come up. 
And I heard from someone who watched our show on uh, on YouTube and had some questions. And he said, you told me to email you, so I did. And I was so thrilled yeah. to answer his questions. So yeah. Yeah, that was People great. out there, get in touch with either one of us. Mm -hmm. We'll help you as much as we can. We'd love to. Till next time. Okay, bye-bye. Good night. We'll see you. Uh, night. Fill your thirst beside the river. Wash the journey from your hand. Feel the comfort flow in 